Israel United in Christ. Um, this is a message from our bishop. Israel United in Christ was founded in 2003. Our goal, the goal that we have of showing these slideshows is to change the hearts and minds of our people. Uh, blacks and Hispanics must understand and know that we are the biblical Israelites, the biblical 12 tribes of the Israel. That's the truth that we must learn and, and, and attain and attend to. Uh, the reason that we go through the various troubles in our community is because we broke God's laws. We are disobedient to the commandments that you find in the Bible. Um, when, you, when you examine the various communities that we are in, blacks and Hispanics suffer the same social, racial, economic problems worldwide. No matter where you go, we suffer the same things. But a lot of times what happens is we don't see that and we're at odds with each other when we actually supposed to be actually one nation. We are the same nation of people. So over the years, voting hasn't helped us. The Christian churches have failed us because that's what most of us have predominantly been in years upon years, but we haven't seen any change in our community. There's a Christian church on just about every corner. Just just talking about Chicago, you can drive from you can drive from you know 79th. You can drive from 79th and Ashland to 95th and Ashland. You're probably bound to pass 20 churches. But then when you look at the communities and the violence and the statistics of death and all of that, it's down. When the church is actually supposed to enhance and enrich the community, but that hasn't been happening. Um, so the reason we're doing this also, it's time for us to change. It's time for us to actually examine the things that's going on in our communities and in our neighborhood amongst us as a people and understand like, okay, why is these things not working? We've marched, we've, uh, we've got community centers, we've done all these things. We went to the Christian church, we paid our tithes, we did all these things over the course of years, but nothing has changed within our community. So what we got to do, get Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3 real quick. What we got to do is consider, okay, all of these things not working. Why? Why are these things not working for us to fix the issues? We've had temporary fixes where things have changed for 10 years maybe, 5 years maybe, but it always go right back down to the same. And you all you all are, you've seen a lot more than I've seen. I'm quite sure everything that I'm seeing, you've seen over your lifetime where things are getting better for a little bit and then it always just crack, come crashing down. So that's what we, that's the purpose of it, us being here. Read that. This is the book of Isaiah chapter one, verse three. Read a little loud. The ox knows his owner. So the Bible says that the ox, read, start at verse one. Verse one, the vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos. Uh -huh which he saw concerning Judah and, on, and Jerusalem. So this is, we're reading out of the book of Isaiah. He says, these are the things that Isaiah saw concerning Judah, which we know is the southern kingdom, and Jerusalem, which is the northern kingdom of Israel. Because if you know anything about the Bible, you know that you study the history. The kingdom of the nation of Israel was split into two kingdoms. You had Judah, Benjamin, and Levi was one, and then the other, the other tribes in the northern kingdom. So this is what he's saying, read. And the days of Azariah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, mm -hmm. kings of Judah, hear, o, o heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished, brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. So this is the most high address in the nation of Israel. He said, I raised up children. When you look at Deuteronomy 76, the Most High God chose the nation of Israel above all the other nations. And he chose us when we was a small nation. It's just today, we don't know ourselves as Israel. We don't know ourselves as, when we read them, a lot of times when we read the Bible, we think that we're Gentiles. And the reason we think that we're Gentiles is because we live in Gentile ways. But we're not, according to the Bible. Uh, read. The ox knoweth his owner. So now this is, Part of that video says the ox knows his owner. The ox is a dumb animal, meaning the ox doesn't have, like we have understanding, reason, logic. We can look at something and analyze it. The ox can't do that. The ox was created to do something and that's what it does. So the Bible says the ox knows his owner. So if you take a, a, a ox, a ox can, you can take it across country. That ox will know who his owner is. 
and it's going it's to go cross country to try to get back to his own. Read. And the ass, his master's crib. And the, the ass, another dumb animal, a donkey. It, was, it does what it was created to do, and that's it. It doesn't go to the left or to the right. But that, that donkey, that ass, knows his master's crib. He know where he live. If you take him, we right, we on 79th and what we at? What, what street? What's the cross street? Aberdeen. Aberdeen. If you had a donkey here, you took it on the west side of Chicago, that donkey, that donkey gonna be able to find his way back home. Read. But Israel doeth not know. Now the Bible compares Israel. It says, but Israel don't know. We don't understand, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we don't understand that the communities, the, the reason that we're on the bottom of society no matter where you go, the reason that uh, our, the, the crime rate is highly elevated in our communities, the reason that uh, we, we got these gangs, we fighting against these other GDs, against the BDs, the Latin Kings versus the GDs, we fighting against each other and killing each other off in way more alarming numbers than the police shooters but when the police shoot us, we riot, we want to tear up the city and march, but then when we shoot in ourselves, nobody do nothing. The, it snitches get stitches. But the reason that we live in that decayed estate because we don't know who we are. We don't understand the, it's like the, I'm not going to go too deep. Read. My um, people does not consider. It says my people does not consider. So that's what I'm saying. We don't consider, like, okay, why is it, no matter how much we try to come together, and we're going, as we go through the slides, so no matter how many times we try to come together, it always amounts to nothing. We try to come together and get businesses, try to build our economy, but nothing ever excels long term with any longevity. It's time for today, it's time for us to consider, okay, why, why, even though I'm working hard to do this, and it's not talking about the individual that may get some type of success. It's talking about as a nation of people, the blacks as a, as a people, the Hispanics as a people. Why are we not excelling like the other nations that's around us? You can have a, a, a Chinese man come from China, be fresh to America, and they'll come here and excel beyond us. So you have Chinatown, you have various things. You, we see it. We see it day in and day out. And the question is, okay, we have to consider, okay, why is these things like they are? Get Amos chapter uh, 3. This is the book of Amos chapter 3 verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. So this, now this is Amos. We're really, we in a different prophet book. And he's saying the same, he pretty much saying the same thing. He says, say it again, read it again. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you. So he said, hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you. Read. O children of Israel. Uh-huh. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. So we have to consider, okay, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native, Native Americans. If you ever did, if you've done any traveling, and you went anywhere, you every city you go to, we go through the same things. Where there's blacks, there's Hispanics, and we're in the same neighborhood. The, the uh, Native Americans, they on reservations on the land that was theirs. This is their land, but they got a reserve of land. The Mexicans, they, they have, they're trying to build a wall up to stop them coming across the border, which was originally their land. So we have to, Think about these things, and this is this is what we what we're going to be going through. Is the Most High God is against us? That's why we are in the state that we are in, and we constantly see the same things duplicating itself. Uh, read, and I, I'm, I see you. You got a question? Yeah, I have a, uh, actually, when I started doing history, uh -huh. my family's history, they were found in New Jersey on the reservation. Uh -huh. Creek Reservation. Uh, we thought we was Indians. We ain't know mm -hmm. that the white man had took my great great grandfather and brought them to New Jersey so that they could be slaves to the Creek Indians. We were slaves to the Creek Indians. Mm -hmm. And 
when I was told that, that's when I started doing my research. Okay. And I know I'm an Israelite, so I'm so glad that y'all said that. I know I'm an Israelite, and I know it's, you know, pretty much where my family's come from on both sides. And most... And when you say your family brought your family over, from where? Um, when they came over from Spain and Africa, even England, Great Britain, those people are so close to Africa, they know who they are. Right. You know, they won't say it. Exactly. They never told us the truth. Exactly. And that's, that's, that's the reason yeah, why we did it. Okay, let's finish that. Therefore, I will punish you for all your inequities. So it says, the Most High God said, read it again, from, read it again from, I think, verse 2. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. So the Most High God said, he, he only known the children of Israel above all the families that's on the face of the earth. Read. Therefore, I will punish you for all your inequities. So then he says, therefore, I'm going to punish you for all your iniquities. Just like a father with his children, a mother with her children. <clears throat> if your children do something, you're punishing your children. Mm -hmm. And of course, as a nation of people, when we have communities, I know you, you all seen it coming up, where it take, a, it take a community to raise the children. If you see, if you see your neighbor that lives 10 houses down from you, you see their children doing something evil, you're going to call and let the parents know. Hey, your son, you're going to stop them, and then you're going to call and let the parent know. But with this, it's, it's specific. When I correct, I'm going to correct my children. Like if my children go to a school and they pick up a bad habit from the school, they, okay, I'm, they come on, they go to the store and steal something. And I haven't been teaching them that. And they pick it up. I'm not going to go and look for the, the, the person that they got it from. I'm going to punish my children. Hey, I told you better. I taught you better than this. I taught you not to steal. I taught you to work for the thing, work for the things that you need. So that's the same thing. The Most High God gave the nation of Israel his commandments, his laws, and his statutes for us to keep them. And we didn't keep them, so now we're going through our discipline. Um, so from there, go, go to the next slide. So we're going to go into the slide. So uh, read 28 to 15. So we're going to go, basically what we're going to go through, we're going to go through a portion of the slide. So and if y'all have any questions, y'all have anything that y'all want to say, feel free to raise your hand, nudge me, because I don't want it to just be me up here talking, because I know that can get boring and redundant. I, I, I like the interaction. Uh, read that. 28 to 15. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So when we read the Bible, we know that the book of Deuteronomy was written to the Israelites. Moses wrote the Moses went on the mount, he received the word from God, and he gave it to Israel. And this is what he said, he starts out, he said, it shall come to pass, I meaning something's gonna happen in the future if you decide to break the rules that God gave you. Something bad's gonna happen. That's what this verse is pretty much telling us. So as we go through the slideshow, it's gonna show what those bad things were. What, you got? what was the reason why this curse was put upon the black man in the first place. Right here. The cur the curse is basically what <clears throat> the thing is. is what did, what did he do to God? This is what I don't understand. What did he do other than the color of his skin? What did he do to bring this on? Uh, read that again. But it shall come to pass. So Moses said, he said, it shall come to pass. So something's going to happen in the future. Read. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So he, remember, he's speaking to the Israelites. He said, if, if thou wilt not listen to the voice of the Lord God, read. To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I commanded thee this day. Or we could say, if, y if, you, if, thou, if thou wilt not listen to the voice of God, 
to keep his laws. Read. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. That all these curses will come upon, will come upon thee all over come upon thee and overtake thee. A curse is a bad thing, right? right? So the reason that these things are happening to us, and notice this void, this verse doesn't distinguish color. Even when you look at when you look at Deuteronomy, it says, when you look at Deuteronomy 1 and 1, it says these be the words that Moses spoke to the nation of Israel. Because it's not just the color of our skin, because we range in color from very dark a very light when you look at the Hispanics. A lot of a lot of Hispanics that we see here are very light. So it's not necessarily the black man. When we say the black man, because we understand, we understand when we say the black man, we're talking about the natives, we're talking about the Hispanics and all of that. But the reason that these things happen to us is because we broke God's commandments. We stopped doing what he we, we stopped doing what I was reading earlier. Uh, give me Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 3. Because what we did, this is one of the commandments. This is one of the things that we did. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 3. Neither, sh neither shalt thou make marriage. Start verse 1. Verse 1. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and hast cast out many nations. For so. So this is when the Most High delivered us out of Egypt and he was taking us into the land of Israel. This is one of the commands. The, this is the Deuteronomy is the re-giving of the law. It's just a summary of the law that was already given to us. So when the Most High took us into the land, read. Before thee, the Hittites and, and the Gergesites mm -hmm. and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Parasites and the Hebites and the Jerbesites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. So the Most High God delivered us into the land of Israel, which was the land of Canaan. This is an Af it was African that was living there. It says these nations was greater than us, but the Most High God thrust, basically, he was with us to take over those lands. Read. And with the, and with the Lord thy God what shall... What did I say? Give us our land back. I say it like that. Read. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, Thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. So the Most High gave us clear instruction to smite them and utterly destroy them. And it's going to, as we read on, it's going to give the reason why he wanted us to just get rid of them, period. He wanted us to kill them off completely. Read. Thou shalt make no covenant with them. We shouldn't make any pacts or agreements but none of that. We were supposed to kill them off. Read. Nor show, show mercy unto them. And show no mercy to them. Read. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. Meaning we wasn't supposed to go and look at them and be like, you know what, they are nice people. They got good customs. You know, let's just save some of them alive. No, he said smite all of them. And he says, neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Same thing. We wasn't supposed to say, oh, you know what, they got some beautiful women. You know what, I'm going I'm to save this woman. Too. I'm going to save her to the side. No, he said destroy all of them. Read. Why? Thy mm. daughters thou shalt not give unto thy sons. Uh-huh. Says don't even take, don't even give, don't even give your daughters to their sons. Read. Nor his daughter shall make thou take into thy son. Uh-huh. For they will turn away thy son from following me. Because they will turn away your son from following me. When we get consumed with the other nations, we'll turn away from our God. We'll start following their ways, their customs. That's one of the things that we've done. Read. That they may serve other gods. Uh huh. So with the anger of the Lord to kindle against, kindle against you and destroy thee suddenly. So one of the things that's idolatry have served, taking on, taking on the, the customs of the other nations is idolatry. It's going away from God's commandments. That's why we're going through one of the things because because of covetousness. We may see, because remember when we were when we were taken out of the land, we were the smallest nation. We was we were still a baby nation. But the most high was with us, so that's why we was able to take over nations. So as he was taking us into these various nations, that's why he told us to cut kill them off. So we wouldn't go after they way. We would see what they look at look at look at their women, look at the things they was doing and say, hey, you know what? That looked like something good to do. 
and then start doing it. That's why we were instructed to kill them off. But we didn't do that like we were supposed to. So now the other nations were pricks and, and, and thorns in our side. And that's, that was one of the things. Just that simple command of kill them off, we didn't do it. That's a, us breaking the commandments of God. That's why we're living in the conditions that we are in. Uh, back to Deuteronomy 28, go to the next slide. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Verse 16, read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and so cursed shall thou be in the field. So it says, cursed shall thou be in the city. I know y'all are familiar with Tulsa, Oklahoma. Y'all, you familiar with that, sir? With the Black Wall Street? Oklahoma? No, no, no. You ever heard of Black Wall Street? I've heard tell of it. So Black Wall Street, that's one of the things that was going on in no oh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Right. We were together as a nation of people. We was together. We had a thri thriving businesses. Banks. We had all of our dollars circulating in our own community. We had those things and then a massacre happened based on a lie that was told by a white woman. Yeah. And what we had built and we was thriving got bombed. That's us being cursed in the city. And you could look at you could look in all the history books across the world. These things ain't happening to nobody else. Not in this magnitude how it happened to us, because we Tulsa, Oklahoma is the is the most popularized. But there were many other Black Wall Streets and the same thing happened. We had the same thing happen with we have a late a late linear. It's dried up now. But it was a town called Oscarville, Georgia. It was another community that we were living in and we had we was thriving. And it was destroyed and turned into a lake. So that's, these things just didn't happen by happenstance. So they, they, somebody got a wise idea, you know what, let's go destroy these people. No, these things happened because we broke God's commandments and this was, his, this was his punishment to us. And it says, cursed shalt thou be in the field. That's, what, that's why we was cursed to serve hard bodies, picking cotton. Half from, the, from the young to the old, we were picking cotton, they didn't care. Go to the next slide. Read uh, 17. Verse 17. Curse shall be thy basket at thy store. Are y'all familiar with the red summer of 1919 and the Detroit destroyed summer of 1967? Or y'all ever heard of Elaine I've Massacre? Heard of I've hmm. heard of it. You've heard of it? Yeah. So these were the times we had businesses. Just to be brief, we had businesses. And the same thing happened. Our business was destroyed. Because when, when the Bible says, curse shall be thy basket, and thy store is talking about our business. Because if you think of a basket, think of a picnic basket. You put stuff in it, close it up, and you go and you have a picnic. That basket is like a storage. So our basket and our store being cursed is our business being cursed. If you look at if you examine it today, you can start a business. And one, we don't support each other with our business. You start a business and you let your family know, your family's trying to get discounts. How you gonna build your business if you're giving everybody discounts? How you gonna build your business if you're giving everybody work for free or you're doing everything for free? You're not gonna be able to build your business. So what happens? Our businesses start and then within two, three years, they fall into the ground because we don't support each other. And the reason being, we don't support each other because the Bible gives us tools on how we're supposed to live amongst each other, how we're supposed to treat each other, um, how we're supposed to make each other thrive. The Bible gives us all those tools, but we said we disregarded the laws of God and said forget it. So now this is what's going on. Our, community, our, our businesses are destroyed. Go to the next slide. Um, read that. Verse eighteen: Cursed shall thou be the curse shall be the fruit of the body and the fruit of thy land 
the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. So it says, cursed shall be the fruit of thy body. We're looking at this picture here. You can hear, you see the conquistadors. This is them coming over here when they, the Indians were already here. This is them coming over here. That you see the little, the little children being fed to dogs. It says this woman hung herself. They had a baby tied to her. The, the dog is eating on the child. Get Leviticus 22, 26 and 20, or 26 and 22. And on this side, you see our children being used as alligator bait. This is our history. These things happen, and what we're doing, we're going to the Bible and showing these, showing how these things correlate directly with the Bible. Today we call ourselves black, African American, <laughs> uh, Afro American, colored. Uh, what's the what other? What does we was called? Puerto Rican. That's what I'm saying. The thing, That's Puerto Rican. Called. That's the thing. The thing about it is, why are we? Because if you if you ask a, a so-called white man. Hey, what's your nationality? They gonna be like, well, you know what? My great grandfather, he was a German from yada yada. They, they gonna go, oh, you know what? My great grandfather, he was from Britain, and he did this, that, and the third. But with us, oh, I'm black. Okay, where is where is the where is the nation? Where's the country black? Ain't no country black. So how is that a nation? Black is the color, or they just don't know. Or they, they used to call race, though. They used to say that they Jews. Say it again. The, over there, not Nazi, well, they say they Jews. And everybody knows Jews are people of color, they, like the Moorish people. But everybody don't know that. And that's the, and that's, that's the hint. That's why, we, that's why we have to bring these things to, to light, because everybody don't know that. Yeah. It's, it's more known now than it was, say, 10 years ago or 20 years ago, but everybody doesn't know. A lot, of, a lot of our people still, even when it comes to asking, what's your nationality? A lot of our people will say a religion. When we say, what's your nationality? A lot of our people will say Christian. They say, I'm a Christian. They say, I'm a, uh, I'm a Baptist. When that's not a, that's not a nationality, that's a religion. But we're the only people from the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. When I say Hispanics, I'm talking about Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, uh, help me out, Spain, Guatemala, Spain Guatemala are, all of them, Spanish. not not Spain, because Spain was the conquerors. Isabella was a black queen. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I'm saying. She was the original queen. She was the queen of the queen. Mm -hmm. Before the Renaissance, before the Renaissance, before the Renaissance, before the before the Renaissance, before the before we were taking over, we were ruling in, in Spain. I'm not a queen. I know this. See, and I'm happy about it. But Are you married? Huh? Are you married? No, uh uh. So you wouldn't be a queen? No, no, no. A I was queen married. has to have a king. Oh, no. Uh uh. They ain't made him yet. So you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be a queen? I know, but you'll, they be, didn't, you'll they be what, didn't what, make what, the right what we would call a daughter of Sarah. Yeah. So back to the slide. You get that Leviticus 26. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 22. I will also send wild beasts among you, which shall rob you of your chi of your children. So if you're not familiar, Leviticus 26 is like a parallel to Deuteronomy 28 that goes over the curses that we that the Israelite that Israelites would have to go through when they broke God's commandments. So now we're reading it again, read it again. I will also send wild beasts among you, which shall rob you of your children. So the Bible says that he's going to send wild, the Most High God said he's going to send wild beasts among us that's going to rob us of our children. This is what we're seeing right here. This alligator, you being, our children, our babies. These babies are one, two years old. And you see an alligator, they use this alligator bait for the enemy. Read it again, it says, and, and cursed shall be the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Here you see, a lot of people don't, a lot of people don't even know this. This is Indian land for sale. You get a home of your own, easy payments. And they still doing this. This is what they're doing today. But they came over here, took over the land. So what happened to what we call, what you would call, 
what happened to the natives that was here, the Native Americans, is the Native Americans and the Hispanics, it was, it was colonialism. And even then, some of them were sent over to Spain as slaves. But here we see, cursed shall be the fruit of thy land. This is a curse. Their land being taken from them and being sold. It says, fine lands in the west, irrigated, irrigable. Grazing, agricultural dry farming. This is what happened to the Indians. Then here on the right, you see, you see a, a Caucasian that's sitting at the bottom and looking, it's a little faded. You see a Caucasian sitting up at the top. This is all the cattle, the buffalo that they slaughtered. Talk about wiping out a food yeah. supply. Yeah. Uh, 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 what, what you call it? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the land, because the animals help fertilize the land. They, when they use the bathroom, it goes back into the, all of that stuff. Talk about destroying something. Uh, next slide. Get yeah, um, Lamentations chapter is it five or four? Five. Lamentations chapter five, verse two. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Our houses to aliens. We are orphans and fatherless. Go back to the other slide. So read it again. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. So it says, the Bible says, our inheritance is turned to strangers. But the Indians, with the, the so-called Indians, which is the northern kingdom of Israel, the so-called Indians, the so-called. So, we we'll read it again. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. A lot of people, a lot of our people say that the, some people say that the slave trade was phony, that we was already here. So that's a partially true statement because as the nation of Israel, we were already here. But we all, more of us was brought over here during the slave trade. But what we're reading right here, it says our inheritance is turned to strangers. That's what happened to the natives, the natives and the Hispanics that was already over here in this land. Mm -hmm. they this land was their inheritance because they came over here long ago and they was already here. But as we read in verse 20, 28 and verse 15, like you can watch movies like, uh, uh, what's the name of that movie? Uh, Roots? No. Nah, Northern Kingdom. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, away from home. Uh, 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 apocalypto. apocalypto. You look at the apoc apocalypto. They were sacrificed. They was going into the woods, taking each other captive, and being sacrificing, taking their hearts out of their body, cutting their head off, sacrificing each other to the sun. So we were in, we was Who in did that? idolatry. Who did that? This was let me see. That was that was Asher. Was was that that was Indians Asher. That movie. Was it the, the Mayans. Uh, the Mayans. It was the Mayans and uh, the Aztecs. The, the, the Mayans and the Aztecs. Asher, the Asher and Issachar. Mm -hmm. and the, as far as that would be the Mexicans and and Zebulon. 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 Sorry, Zebulon. So that was the Hispanic that was already over here. You look at Central America, Central America into uh, South America, right. that was them. When you look at that movie. But the reason that the, the reason that these things happened is because that's what they was over here doing. They were over here in idolatry. They were sacrificing each other's flesh. They were sacrificing, but those things happened. The Bible says we just read in verse 15. If you were not, uh, if you were not if you don't keep my commandments, I'm going to curse you. Yeah. And that's what they were doing over here. They were serving other gods. They were doing things that were not convenient. They were doing things that didn't, that wasn't found in the book of the law. Let's get that real quick. Um, Esdras. Second Esdras. There's the book of Second Esdras, chapter 13, verse 40. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away, carried away prisoners out of their land, their own land, in the time of Osea, the king. So when you examine the history, when the kingdom split, the northern kingdom of Israel went off into idolatry right away. They never kept the commandments. 
They went off into idolatry, so they was the first ones taken off into slavery back then by the Assyrians. The Assyrians came and took them captive over to Assyria. Read. Whom Salmanasar, the king of Assyria, led away captive. Uh -huh. And he carried, carried them over the waters. And so came they into another land. Uh -huh. But they took this counsel among themselves. So they were freed. From that, they were, at that one point in time, they were freed from that captivity. And when they were free, they said, hey, you know what? Let's go some, they pretty, well, let's read. I'm going ahead of myself. Read. That they would leave the multitude of the heathen uh -huh. and go forth into the further country which never mankind dwelt. So this, they came, they had a council. They said, you know what? Let's go to another country. Let's get away from these heathen nations. Let's get away from them and go to another land that, that, that mankind never dwelt. Because that during this time, this land was not inhabited. The Americas, there was right. nobody over right. at that time. Right. Read. That they might there keep their statues which they never kept in their own land. So they they and they they might they knew that they wasn't keeping the commandments while they was there. So they're like, you know what, let's go to this further land so we can keep the commandments over there. So them coming over here, this was their inheritance. When they came over here, they were supposed to be upholding God's laws. Read. <clears throat> and they entered into Euphrates <clears throat> by the narrow passage of the river. Mm -hmm. For the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. So, without, they went, they came down from where, the, uh, where Israel is there, where the Euphrates River, went down around, around Africa and came up over here. And that's why when it says the most high hell steal the flood, when you're traveling that distance across that much water, you're bound to hit cyclones, hurricanes, uh, tsunamis, all type of stuff. But it said the most high hell steal the flood until they came over here. Read. <clears throat> For though that country there was a great way to go, uh -huh. namely of a year and a half. So that journey took them a year and a half. That's how you know it wasn't them going through the Bering Strait. They came around, they through the water, they came around the landmass of Africa, which is huge because the, the maps that we see today don't even give a, a glimpse of how big Africa is. So they would say a year and a half, read. And the same region is called Aserith. And the same region is called Aserith. When you look in the Jewish encyclopedia, Aserith is America. So they came over here then. So they was already over here. And that's why when the conquistadors came over here, they knew who was, they knew, they knew, they had our Bible, they had our records, they knew where we were. So when they came over here to the Americas, well, you got Christopher Columbus, Hernan Cortez, all of them, they knew what they were doing. When they came over here, they knew specifically those are the children of God. We are finna go over there. And the reason they, they, the reason they came over at that time is because the Most High pretty much said, okay, I'm tired of your BS. It's time for you to get, it's time for you to get your punishment. So that's when they came over and they took the natives, they took them captives and sent them to Spain, Europe, Britain, and hence they came to the West Coast of Africa and grabbed us and brought us over here. But let's go to the next slide. Right. Verse, uh, go back to 28, 19. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 19. Curse shall thou be, curse shall thou be when thou comest in, and curse shall thou be when thou goest out. Meaning that we were born slaves and we died slaves. You got Tony Thompson, who was born a slave, died a slave. Matilda McCreer, the, a transatlantic slave trade survivor. Zora Neale Hurston, a transatlantic slave trade survivor. Uh, jump to verse 48. Verse 48. <clears throat> Therefore shall thy serve thy enemies. So another one of those curses is that we would serve, the nation of Israel would serve our enemies. Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. And it says, when the, which the Lord shall send against thee. That's how we know when the conquistadors came over here, they knew what it was coming for. They knew who, they knew exactly when you, it's a movie called 1492, where Christopher Columbus cites Edges 
because his uh, explorer that was with him, because they met, this was this was a, a land that wasn't con nobody came over here. So they, his his uh, acquaintance asked him, so how do you know that? How do you know that people gonna be over there? How do you know his land over there? And he's quoted at so they knew they know they knew who they were coming over here for. It wasn't no it wasn't happenstance. But they said, oh let's just go sail to sea and if we bump into something, we're gonna bump into something. And if we bump into something with some people, we just gonna take them over. No, they knew that the nation of Israel was over here and they was coming over here with purpose to take over the land and do what they did. Because it was divine it was divinely inspired by the most high. He sent them against us. Read. And hunger and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. And it says, and he shall put a yoke, I'm going to start at the end. It says, he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. If y'all look at the front page of your flyer, you see those yokes of iron that was on us, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and the blacks. Us is in place to us that's in the room, the blacks. But you also see the images of the natives that would had those chains around their neck. Because they was also taken over to uh to uh like Spain and Portugal and stuff like that. Now go to the next slide. So it says, and will serve our enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. Snap. We got we got we on food stamps, the local food pantry. Jewels, Walmart. When we want to get something to eat, we got to go to our enemy to get it. McDonald's, Wendy's. When we hungry, even when we was in slavery, when we were hungry, we were fed by our slave masters. Now we're still fed by our slave masters, but now it's more of a mental thing where we think we're free and we think we can, we can do what we want to do. But we st everything we got, we got to go to our enemy to get it. It says that, the, it says that we're going to serve our enemies in hunger and thirst. You want to get something to drink? You got a house? You got to pay a water bill. You got to pay for water that falls freely out of the sky. And most, in a lot of places, you can't even collect rainwater. In a lot of places. But water comes. Most high give us water. But we got to pay for it. You can dig. You can dig down into the ground and then ran right in, in, a, in the right spots and dig and get water. But we got to pay for it because the, the government did that and got pipelines and all that going through. So now you got to pay for what God gave us. That's for us serving our enemies. Uh, it says in nakedness. That's the clothing. The clothing, the textiles. We don't own the textiles or none of that. We picked the cotton, but we don't reap the benefits of that cotton. We got to go to our enemy and pay for it. Next slide. And it says, in want of all things. When we're born, we got to have a social security number. we got to have a birth certificate. When we want to get our education, we got to go to the white man. we got to go to our enemies to get our education for our medical help, medical assistance. we got to go to our enemies to get, to get, and you have to, with editing, you're going to have to cut this out, with medicine. Is the medicine designed to make us better? No. 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 If you get high blood pressure, the solution would be to adjust your eating habits. Mm -hmm. Eat the right, the right uh, herbs and vegetables and things like that. But what they would do is say, no, nah, you know what? Take this pill. And then you'll find yourself on that pill for 20 years and your blood pressure is still high. And if you don't take the pill, your blood pressure shoot back up because you're still eating the same way that you ate that caused the blood pressure or the diabetes or whatever it may be. You, the, 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 the medicine is for the pharmaceutical industry to make money. But that's us serving our enemy. That's, what, that's the lot we have. But if we eat right and we get, if we eat right, follow the dietary law, stop eating pork, shrimp, crab, let's get that. Leviticus chapter 11. Because as I'm, as I'm bringing this out, remember the reason that it goes back to your, what was your name again? I don't remember. Curtis. 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 Okay. Like you asked the question earlier, why why are these things happening? Why do we, why why is the black man going through what we're going through? 
So this is this is one of the commandments that we broke as it relates to our eating habits. Uh, read that. Go to jump, jump to verse 7. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 7. And the swine, though he divided the hoof and cloven foot. Read verse 1 real quick, just so we can get the, the context of what, what's going on. Verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which you shall eat among all beasts that are on the earth. So now, so we're reading in Leviticus 11, we're reading about the dietary law. We're reading about the beasts that can be eaten and the beasts that cannot be eaten. Jump to verse 7. And the swine, though he divided the hoof and be cloven footed, Yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. So the swine or pig or pork, it says, the Bible says he is unclean unto us. So we're not supposed to eat him. That the, goes for your chitlin, <laughs> pig foot, what else? Pork chops. Pork oh, chops. Oh, man, man. Oh, 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 pepperoni pizza, <laughs> sausage. <laughs> Uh, bacon, baked pork all bacon, because they have beef bacon, they have alternatives, but those things we cannot eat. Read on. <laughs> and and that's something that growing up, you ate it with no problem. That. I don't know about chitlin, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't stomach it. You couldn't eat chitlin? No, I couldn't stomach the spit. I, I ate yours and mine. But that, but those are things that. The Bible says not to do, I know, but, but they, we they did didn't it. Teach us that part of the Bible. Then that's, that's the thing. They didn't teach us. And that's the thing. That's why. That's hence why we here because that's one of the things that the Most High says unclean to you. Because what is the what's the purpose of the pig do? A pig is a garbage disposal. Pig eat good. No, a pig don't eat good. A pig is a garbage disposal. Even if you put it on a, a land with. Um, if you even if you put it I in a place where it's only going to eat grass, what you're saying that's what is, that's what right. That's what's told. Of. The pig is uh, the, the pork is treated as a delicacy <laughs> when the Bible says unclean. Back in the day, it was not that delicacy. It if wasn't you had that. No, see, ten children and two thing. adults in the and house. It, guess what? That chillings was mighty fine for that. That's, and that's the thing. <laughs> we were we were we deceived. Didn't know. And food to know. think that it was a delicacy. We didn't because know. Because it was easy. I know. I know. I we understand. We still trying to fill our bellies. I understand. But the thing is, though, that's why, even though we were, even whether we knew or didn't know, that's why we being punished. Because we broke his commandments. Yeah. He, he going to judge us based on the commandments, whether we doing it ignorantly or we doing it willingly. We still going to be judged by the commandments because... We are the children of God. Go ahead. Can I ask you this? Uh -huh. Did did uh the Catholics or the Christians or whatever take Moses uh scrolls? What you mean? And tell, huh? What you mean? Did they take did the scrolls? Take, did they take the scrolls that Moses had? And do what? Had gotten from God. And 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 put it in the Bible for. I've just been thinking about that lately. Uh, I don't know about the writing of the Bible. The writing of the Bible. You saying that they did they take those strolls and put it into their Bible? I don't know if I'm fully understanding this. You, repeat. You said that the Catholics take did the Catholics Moses take scrolls. Moses scrolls, which they took from Moses. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the Israelites. Did they take those scrolls and put them into the Bible? Um, like the Catholic Bible? No, they will. See, so I are, they, are you saying? Say, are you right. saying did they did they rewrite the Bible? They, I know they re, re, written the, like the Ten Commandments and the Bible, like we're talking. So about. trying to say yeah. when Moses got uh, the Catholics were in the Bible and they. Interacted with Moses and no, we oh. wasn't no. Oh. When we we were brought over when they the scrolls were brought over to England, I mean to uh, European, mm -hmm. and they took our scrolls before we even came to uh, Africa. You know, back to Africa, the Israelites or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
They did they take our Bible, I mean our scrolls, which was done by God and Moses, mm -hmm. and did they turn that into a Bible? So I think I get what you're saying. So get some wait, let me let me finish this real quick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna okay. Wait. Let me finish this. Read. Verse 8. Of their flesh shall you not eat, of their carcass shall you not touch. They are unclean to you. So remember, so what we got to remember with reading this, when it comes to a pig, if a dead, if you got pigs in your, if you got pigs, it said, neither, it said, read it again. Make sure I say it right. Of their flesh shall you not eat, and their carcass shall you not touch. So it says that their flesh shall you not eat, and their carcass shall you not touch. If you had a farm and you had pigs on your farm and one of your pigs died, you got to touch it to bury it or touch it to dispose of the body. So when this is saying, neither shall you touch it, that means you don't touch it to cook it. You don't put your hands to it to take it in the house, butcher it, and now you're eating pig feet. <laughs> That's what it's referring to. It's not talking about don't touch it to dispose of it. No. Read on. Read on. They are unclean to you. Uh huh. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. So now it's saying, these shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. So seafood. So what is now saying, okay, this is the seafood that you can eat and the seafood that you can't eat. Read. Whatsoever have fins and scales so in the waters. So whatsoever got fins and scales in the water, read. And the seas. Uh-huh. And in the rivers. Uh-huh. Them shall ye eat. It says, so whatever has fins and scales, and all the waters, those you shall eat. Read. And all that have not fins and scales. So everything that don't have fins and scales. Read. And the seas. Uh huh. And in the rivers. Uh huh. Of all that move in the waters. Uh huh. And of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. So anything that don't have fins and scales is an abomination. In the black community, we love crab legs. I know that's right. Crab legs do not have fins and scales, so we cannot eat it. Catfish know, nuggets. We, we know now we know. We I can't mean, eat you know that. now we know that's it's right. not but good. These are the, we that's right. be eating but it. these are the things that's going deeper into your question. Why are these things happen? Because we still breaking God's commandments. Even though a lot of us don't and know. We it. know now a lot of us yeah, do know now. Right. But this these are the reasons why, because uh, I, I know for me. Before I learned of it, I used to love to go get catfish nuggets from sharks or JJ fish. But that's an abomination. And once I found it out, I think I had I think I was already not eating it no Wait more. But once I found out What what why you can't eat catfish? Catfish don't have scales. Oh, okay, like okay, like purchase. Oh uh, no, I didn't know man. We don't get no, that'd be, I'm thinking about the welcome home pack. Okay. But so okay. a fish, like you got perch, perches, you can eat perch. Perch Um, give me some names. Tuna, Sam, tuna, tuna salmon, walleye, walleye. Sorry, so it's a, the thing about it. The thing about it, it's a whole lot of fish. <laughs> they got fins and scales that we can eat, mm -hmm. but we choose to love the things that don't get fed in the skills. So they taste so them. much better, don't they? No, they don't. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> I understand what you're saying. I understand. I know, I know better now. Right. They don't. You know. They don't. They don't. The, <laughs> salmon, uh, perch. It's so many. It's so many fish. Well, what's that uh, calabria? Where that came from? I that ain't know. no fish. I, I can't talk about it. I, don't, okay. I can't really. Okay. I don't they eat calabria. They came out of the dirty lake. They got fins and skills. It's lawful. But to each his own. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. With tilapia, but with tilapia, a lot of us, we could probably attest to it. When we first learned that we couldn't eat like the catfish and stuff like that, tilapia was a go to. We ate a lot of tilapia because really? we didn't know about all of the other fish that you oh, can yeah. actually eat that, got, that has fins and scales that you can get that's wild caught and not farm raised on the farm. But we're not going to go into that. We're going we to keep it moving. But I brought those things out because with our diet, that plays a huge role exactly. in the If we take care of our bodies, we ain't got to go to the, we don't have to, I ain't going to say we don't have to go to the doctor, but we don't have to, you wouldn't have to go to the doctor continuously over and over for high blood pressure, for diabetes, 
uh, heart disease. All of those things wouldn't happen if we ate, ate right. But like the scriptures, like the scripture said, it says, "Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies." Who taught us how to eat? The the food pyramid. It makes you pay attention. But I know this stuff will get blocked. Who taught us how to eat? The food, who taught us how to eat? And from I, the food pyramid. The food pyramid has, uh, I think it got, I ain't looked at one that thing in so long, but it got, I think it got fruits and vegetables at the top in the smallest part. And then it got like breads and pastas and all the other stuff at the bottom. Meats and poultry. That's backwards. Our diet is supposed to be filled with fruits, vegetables, things that got life in them, that, that grow naturally out of the earth, herbs, because that's what's going to rejuvenate our body, give us the nutrients that we need. Our bodies, the thing about it, and I'm, if, if I cut myself, is that cut going to stay open forever? No. It's going to heal itself. It's going it's to yeah. heal. So what makes us think that if we get, if let's say you do eat bad and you get diabetes, you mean to tell me that the, my, the internal, my body, the rest of my body can't do the same thing as if I get an external cut? My body's not made up to heal me internally if I eat the right thing? Yeah. Because even with your, even if you get a cut, as you, if your health deteriorates or your immune system and things like that deteriorates, that cut's gonna take longer to heal because your body is not as optimum strength. It's not getting the things that it need to work like it's supposed to work. So if we eat, if like people get, if you get these various diseases, if you get the right herbs, vegetables, if you eat the right diet and all those things, your body is gonna yeah. get rid you of that. Yeah, you find that pretty much, you know, especially if you live to get older, mm -hmm. you learn that, you know, certain things you can't eat. Right. And Exactly. Pig is one for me. Uh -huh. I don't eat pig no more. I eat chicken. Um, like I said, the right. fish, I pretty much don't eat all that. I, but I do like some trout. I like trout. Rainbow. Trout. Trout. Rainbow trout. Rainbow. They trout got is clean. You eat that. You got scales on it. Right. So that, and that's the thing. We've been taught how to eat by enemy. You got to eat three times a day. And it's that, that's, our bodies need, get that in, um, is it 31, what's the right, 31? Uh, a very little is, a man, is enough, is sufficient for a man well nurtured. Our bodies, on, we only need to eat when we need to nourish our body, restore nutrients. Strength, because it's like, uh, just all the things I know. Uh, you got uh, elderberry, echinacea, um, Mullet, those are herbs that build up our immune system. But us going to our enemies for one of all things, they have taken all of that away from us. The information is out there, but because we rely so heavily on our enemies, everything that they put out there, we believe it. Mm -hmm. The food pyramid, trash. Mm -hmm. That's not how to read that. I'm talking. There's a book of Ecclesiasticus, mm -hmm. chapter 31, verse 19. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured. So it says a very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured. So when we eat, and this is it's how we were raised. We got this big old plate. We all meat and a little vegetables, if it's some vegetables on the plate. We'll go to a barbecue and you got hot dogs, chicken, uh, hamburgers, steak. And then potato salad, uh, well, this, well, huh? baked beans, beans, and then a small salad that nobody touched. <laughs> potato salad. Potato well, salad. no salad. Pasta Everything salad. is potato salad and pasta salad. <laughs> All of those are foods that you would, and you circle back. All of those are foods that you would feed a slave a pig. to get them big and bulky mm -hmm. so that they can work. And burn that because they're gonna burn all that off. But even even in that aspect, if you know about the Bible and you think about Daniel, Daniel asked for pulse, which was your fruits and vegetables, and he was stronger than all of them. Yeah. So the, the, the psyche is it's 
it's twisted. Everything been twisted, turned upside down to where we thinking that you tell you tell you tell a, a black man, hey man, you can't eat no chicken. Like, no chicken? That's my protein. So you can't eat beans, you can't eat quinoa, you can't eat you can't eat other stuff that has protein. I'm not saying chicken is okay to eat, but we have been fooled to think that we can that we gotta eat red meat to get protein. We gotta eat certain things. Like no, what you think the cow eat? The cow eat grass. The cow eat, the cow is a uh, herbivore. herbivore. That's right, right? The cow is a herbivore. <laughs> so if the cow is eating vegetation and you eating a lot of beef, you eating grass, let's say you eat grass fed beef. You're getting, uh, for lack of better terms, you're getting a processed form of the vegetation. Why not just eat the vegetation? I'm not saying that it's okay. There's nothing wrong with eating beef. But our people, we grow up and we eat too much of meat. And, and when, you, when you're examining, meat was a, a, what's the word I'm looking for? A tree. A tree. You, you, your, 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 your son just came back from a long journey and you ain't seen him in years. Hey, go kill the fatty cow. Unless it, it was, it was, we more so ate meat like that when we feasted. Because think about it. Back when we had farmland and things like that, we had cattle, sheep. If you were poor, you didn't have a lot of uh, livestock. But with the, if you had more, when you had more abundance, you had livestock because that, that's what that's what uh, sustained you. So just imagine if if we ate meat every day, you gonna kill off all your animals, all your livestock that's tilling your land for you and doing the, doing what you gotta do. So we didn't eat meat like that. We ate it. It was a delicate. It was a yeah. It was a delicacy. It was a special occasion. We had new moons, feast days, and then we go all the way back to Bible times. We sacrificed animals. But we didn't eat animals. We wouldn't just eat meat all day, every day. But that's where, with the medic, when the, with the uh, pharmaceutical industry is set up just to make money. When they put us on medications and stuff like that, that medication, even when you look at like an IV, you look at the back of the bottle, it say side effects may cause heart disease, may cause bloody bloody stool. Like <laughs> why am I taking like why am I taking a medication that's gonna hurt me? It's gonna make me worse. Like it's supposed to be this supposed, this supposed to help my high blood pressure, but then it's gonna cause these other problems. That don't make no sense. That's us being cursed to serve our enemies in hard bondage. We gotta go to them for everything. And the everything that we go to them for is just the for them, it's just for them to keep on moving. The pharmaceutical, that's a business. That's not a, that's not a, that's not a health care system. The FDA. The FDA. I think that's on the, go to the next slide. No, it's not. But those, those things, all of this stuff is set up against us. It's not set up for us. It's against us because, uh, read that verse 48 again. Read the last part. Set and, up against us, read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So it says, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon our neck. Who put these yokes of iron on our neck? Exactly, Caucasian man. Put these yokes of iron on our neck. And then it says what? Until he have destroyed thee. And it says, until he have destroyed thee. Today we ain't got them, them yoke of iron on our neck. Why not? Because we no longer know that we are the Israelites. We no longer know that we are God's children. We no, we no longer know or realize that we are the greatest nation on earth. What is a nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 